Hey guys, it's Emma, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I have a super belated but great video for you guys. So today I'm going to be talking about the 14 books that I read in July for the Book Junkie Trials. So let's just hop right in. So I'm going to try to hold up the stack um, just to show you. Like I said, the 14, these are not all of them because I read quite a few library books. So these are, I think, nine of the 14 books, but I will be discussing all the books that I read in order. So we're just going to start um, at what I finished on the first day of July, which I read the beginning or most of it um, in the end of June because I had a little bit of a lead being the um, Team Magi for the Booktaking Trials, but the first book that I finished in July was Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This worked for Arc Grove, um, which is to read a book that is gritty, gruesome, or gory. And um, this is the sequel to uh, Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which the name sort of just goes along with it. But we are following two uh, main characters, um, Victor and Eli, who start off as like really close best friends, um, college roommates, and turn into mortal enemies, and you're seeing them on two timelines, figuring out how they got there and what's going on. And there's also, um, they have superpower, like this world has superpowers. Um, I don't really want to dive too much into it because I feel like a lot of the book is like learning what's going on. Um, this book I gave four stars. I thought it was not as strong as Vicious. It, I thought this was a duology, but it turns out it is going to be a three book series, I believe. So this definitely felt like you were building up to a great, um, third book ending, but it, I just felt like it lagged a little bit and it didn't have as many of the amazing quotes that I loved in Vicious. Uh, I did annotate this, but yeah, not exceedingly. I just felt like I reached the end and I was wanting more. So yeah, four stars for that. Next, I read Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. This was for the prompts for Old Pirate Cove, which was to read a book that takes part, at least in part, on the sea. And we're um, following along with some pirates, so um, obviously we are taking place on the sea. This was a super short and quick read. I think I read this in like a day or two. Like the font is really big and the margins are big. But we are following our main character, um, Alosa as she is trying to retrieve something for her her father who is the pirate king obviously um and so it's all about her mission to retrieve this item and the struggles that come along the way and in order to retrieve this item she has to let herself be captured by another crew of pirates and so there's a, that whole debacle um, I was really surprised. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. I did end up giving it four stars. I sort of just picked it up on a whim because I needed something that took place on the sea and it was like six dollars on Amazon. But like I said, was very happily surprised and I read this super quick. So I know I'm definitely going to pick up. I'm not going to say the name of the next book, but book two because I don't know why she named it that, like the name of the second book what it is because it's literally like a reveal in this book is the title of the next book. Okay, and the third book that I read was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the illustrated edition. This was for the prompt for Glimmer, which was to read a beautiful or colorful book. And this, like I said, is the illustrated edition. So there's beautiful illustrations throughout. This is the first time I think I've read the series in like 10 years maybe maybe eight so yeah it's it's been a long time but I really enjoyed my time I'm so jealous of everyone who's annotating um right now because this is the only copy that I own of like myself like I'm not going to annotate like my childhood copies which are my mom's technically um and the whole family's so I really want to buy some of the um original U.S. hardcovers which I know everyone is doing uh, to annotate so yeah I'm going to do that but I loved this um, loved this reading experience this is the first time I've read the illustration edition fully through we have we also have that but I got the box set for Christmas so yeah but I 
am loving this series. I'm so excited to be rereading it and I'm going to try to get to Chamber of Secrets in August. The next two books I have were library books so I'm sorry I do not have anything to physically hold and I have no idea how people add in those pictures. I'm not techie, sorry. <laughs> was um, The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill which was for The Draconic Isle. I feel like a lot of people read this for this option because it's graphic novel, it's really short, it's really cute. Um, I thought this was really adorable. I haven't read a ton of graphic novels, so I didn't really know how to rate it, but I did end up giving it a four out of five stars. I thought it was adorable. The attention to detail that Katie O'Neill put in was super awesome. Um, like with the care of um, the caring guide in the back and the um, diversity, we have, you know, disability rep, we have um, LGBTQ plus rep, and it was just so nice. And I'm definitely going to try to pick up the Tea Dragon Festival when it comes out. I know a lot of people have been reading that off NetGalley and I've been hearing some great things. So yeah. The next book that I read was the last book on the Mage Path, um, which was The Bookie Grail, which was to read Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Unfortunately, like the majority of people, it seems, I, I didn't really enjoy it. I gave it a three star, but that was more on like, I know it's like probably written, like it seems like it's written really well and stuff. I just, I, it seemed like a more boring version of The Princess Bride. One of the people I'm like mutually following and they're following me on um, Instagram was so excited that I was reading this book and like said it was one of their favorites and I felt so bad because I really did not like it. I just thought our main character was annoying and he's kind of oblivious and the whole just story was not really good like it's a pretty short book it's like 200 and something pages like under 300 pages and it took me like three days because I never wanted to read it and this is times when I would be reading you know uh, m more than that in a day so yeah Okay, so now that we finished the mage path, I was free to roam the rest of the queendom and just play with the challenges there. So the next book that I read was Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Infernal Devices trilogy, and I'm reading one Cassandra Clare book a month in order to try to get through as many as possible. I say get through as if it's like a punishment or something, but I actually liked this book a lot. Surprising because I semi hated Clockwork Angel. Okay, I didn't hate it. I just felt like Clockwork Angel repeated a lot of things that we learn in the Mortal Instruments for literally no reason. Um, and then I felt like it was very humorous though. Like um, some of our main characters were very funny. So I loved that. And there was a lot of good quotes. Clockwork Prince. I felt like we lost that, but we gained what we didn't have in, for, in the form of action um, because there was like little to no action in Clockwork Angel, in my opinion. And then here it seems like we got more of both, but I still like the Mortal Instruments better. But I did end up giving this a 4.5 on Goodreads. I did annotate it, and I have a bunch of pink tabs, which means like love, so that's good. I did um, do for this month, I did a quote page. So I have like three different quotes in my bullet journal and then there's like my wrap up. So I did really like the book. Um, I just think that I'm still Mortal Instruments trash. Um, not really, but I just think that I will always like the Mortal Instruments better because that's the sh I watched the show only a little bit first and then I read those first. So I just feel like they set a bar and uh, the Infernal Devices didn't quite reach it. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people love this series, but I, like I said, I really enjoyed this one. 4.5. But yeah, I also started rewatching the TV show and I'm, it's, it's not the same as the books, but it's still good. It's still good. Okay. So the next book I read was an ebook library book. Sorry. Um, and that is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This I gave a five star. Okay, I don't really know what it was about this book, but the romance is so cute. So basically, it's these two people who, um, basically they knew each other from college, 
and the, Hazel was kind of like embarrassing herself and like she was like oh this Josh kid like is super cute but he thinks I'm like insane because I like am making a fool of myself sometimes which don't we all so they end up me, me re-meeting because of um Josh's sister is Hazel's like best friend um or like work friend I forget what it was so they re-meet and they start hanging out and then that's where they start um setting each other up on blind dates but the blind dates don't really work out so then they um yeah the romance ensues i'm not really gonna say anything else but yeah um most people just say that they set each other up on blind dates but that like doesn't start for like a while so i don't really understand why that's in like the main synopsis for people okie dokie Okay, the next book that I read was Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. This, um, was, oh shoot, I forgot to mention what the past ones were for. Um, rewind, rewind. Clockwork Princess was to read a sequel, and Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating was to read a guilty pleasure, I believe. Empty Barrel and read an indulgent read. Yeah, okay. And then we have Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. This worked for the Elven Guard, read a book with war, military, or political themes, which uh, there's a lot of politicalness in this. So this, I feel like I've described this so many times on my channel through reading vlogs and such. Um, but this follows our main character, Yelena, who is about to be um, executed for um, murder when she is given the opportunity to become the commissioner's food taster in exchange for her life. And the story just goes on from there. This is a very political based fantasy with um, a sometimes kind of annoying romance. Like there's going to be obviously going to be, it's an early 2000s YA romance, um, YA fantasy. There's going to be a romance. The romance I feel in this book is tolerable, but uh, I'll save what I'm going to say for when I talk about the second book. But yeah, so I thought the political aspects of this were really cool and the magic was very interesting. But yeah, I did end up giving it a 3.5. It was a little better than your average YA fantasy. Like, it's not like, I'm not saying like, go get it. It's amazing. But like, if you have it, like, yeah, it's, I read it pretty quickly. I read it in a few days. It was interesting. I continued on with the series. It's not like it's bad or anything. It's just not my favorite. Okay, next we have Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. This worked for the challenge of the Drowning Deep read a book with a rich world building, which this definitely did. Um, so this follows our main characters, Sophia and Islet, who basically get in trouble for accidentally um, messing with this very important person so they have to go on the run and they are um different kinds of witches so Sophia is a truth witch which truth witch so basically she can tell if someone's lying or not and Sophia is a thread witch which means she can see people's threads which show their emotions and then we also have um Prince Merrick who is a wind witch um who they come into contact so yeah, this book was really good. It had a really great world building, like I said, and the as like the idea of like these different types of witches was very interesting. There's also a blood witch who tracks um, people based on the smell of their blood, and it was just a very very cool concept. And we really get to see like different parts of the world, and we like see different um like insulin comes from like a different culture so that's sort of shown and that's really cool and I just thought this was super complex and more than your average YA fantasy so I gave it a four out of five stars I really enjoyed it I went and bought Wind Witch it's back here pretty much immediately after finishing it so I'm definitely gonna be reading that soon the next book that I read was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This worked for Giant Squid to read a book that intimidates you because 
Jane Austen 1800s uh, writing classic uh, really can really intimidates me but um, I did enjoy this it took me a while to get into Jane Austen's really convoluted writing I feel like she's constantly like talking around something instead of just like saying it and you know obviously this was written in 1813 I believe and so there's a lot of topics in here and the way that women are mentioned and talked about that I really didn't like hearing as you know 2019 woman but yeah I mean obviously this is one of the best love stories um I love the movie I've seen it 40 times maybe more I really don't know way too many times but it's okay and after reading this I instantly went and watched the movie I still have to watch the BBC version like the TV show but I've never seen that if you've seen it and tell me if it's better than the movie or the book um, down below but yeah um overall gave us a four star I did also buy Persuasion when I bought this so I am going to read Persuasion at some point but not soon because her writing <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going through this like a little fast. There's just literally 14 books. So I don't want to be here forever. You don't want to be here forever. We can do this. Okay, the next book I read was an, another library book and that was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. If you saw my vlog for week three of the Book Junkie Trials, linked right here, you will see um, my emotions through this book. This book follows our two main characters who I am obviously forgetting their names because it wouldn't be a video of mine without it. Who basically, one is the sister and maid of honor of the bride in this wedding and um, the other is the best man or the brother of the groom. And so basically at their sibling's wedding there is a seafood buffet and everyone gets sick from it except for these two who did not eat from the seafood buffet. So then their siblings are like, hey, go take our honeymoon in for us because it's non-refundable and go to Hawaii. And that's what happens. So basically, the first half of the book when they're in Hawaii, beautiful, love, five stars, great. If it, the book would have ended when they got home, it would have been amazing. But no, then we had to come home and then they faced all this stuff that I just thought was a little much. And then the way that the characters were acting were not matching what they said they were feeling or what they were saying did not match their actions and it really annoyed me and then that was like a hundred pages that like kind of pissed me off and I was crying because I was so upset and then the ending 50 75 pages were pretty good they resolved obviously um, what happened and there was like a really cute like almost John Hughes movie-esque um, uh, element at the end but yeah I just it's literally like that middle part just ruined the book for me and I hate to say that I, I finished this two weeks ago I think and I still have not rated it I cannot decide what to give this rating for a rating because I'm telling you like literally if the book ended when they got home I would have given this book five stars and it would have been a favorite book of all time I'm clearly still not over it but you know that's fine. This was for Dwarf Mound read a book with a hint of romance. So the next book I read was another classic and it's The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is a children's classic dystopian. I haven't read this book in like a decade. Um, my whole family went through and like read these a long time ago. But this is basically following our main character Jonas who's living in this dystopian world where basically um when they reach a certain age is it 15 or 16 um they are given like the job that they're going to do um because they're being watched like their whole lives and they have like internship hours and like stuff like that and so he is determined to be the next giver i think but the guy who's giving is the giver but he's the receiver um, but basically, the giver holds all of the memories of the population from before, and so in this population, there's no colors, no snow, no sleds, like, no, it's really random. So, the giver has all of the memories, no war, like, he has all the memories of all the bad things that were taken away from this world. So then they're giving on to Jonas, and the book ensues. 
this I gave four stars. It was one of my favorite classics. I've read this book like five times. But this time, I just felt like when I read it, the story felt so incomplete. It's about 170 pages in this edition. And you can just tell it's like a series. But also I feel like it's not even a series. It's just that one book was cut into four chunks. Like this book doesn't stand alone. Like where you're, this book ends, you're like, okay, what's happening? Like it, it literally ends like basically mid chapter. Like it, it feels like they, someone like cut off the rest of your book. Like it's that much of like a harsh end. Like it's just, I don't know how to, I don't want to like spoil you, but like it's a good book. If you haven't read this series, I definitely recommend it. I think as a series as a whole, it stands better than just, you know, reading a single book. But yeah, the, this was for Crimson Peaks to reread a favorite. The next book that I read was an, another library book. These are library kids was The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This is a book following um, two main characters who are basically pull, um, opposing each other in this magical competition. We don't really know much about it. That's basically all we know. But it's a very atmospheric book. This was for Hall The Hallow Isle to read an atmospheric or horror. This was a super atmospheric book. And you um, have these sections in parts of the book where it's written in first person, second person, I keep forgetting. When it's like, you did this, you walked here, you did this, blah, blah, blah. So that was super interesting and it really brought you into the story. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of five stars. There was just what, something about it was not fully there. I don't know if it was the love triangle or what. But it got to be very like dramatic and elaborate and I feel like this would be a really good movie. But yeah, it was very interesting. I literally don't want to say that much about it because I feel like it's best to go in like not knowing anything. Because that's kind of how I did it and that's what everyone told me and I agree. So, go read it. Off of that little bit that I'm telling you. Sorry. So the last book that I read was Magic Study by Maria V. Schneider. This is the sequel to um, Poison Study, and I read this for the challenge of Queen and Stone, which is to read a book featuring royalty because there is some different tribes being introduced and stuff who have royalty, and the commissioner is basically the king because he dethroned the king and he just didn't want to be called the king, so we called the commissioner. But yeah, so this basically picks up literally right after the first book. And I really liked it. I gave it a 3.5. I'm considering dropping it to a 3 just because of the romance in here. Um, on one... Okay, so... The main character's love interest calls her love. Okay? And on one page, she he calls her love 14 times. Because he goes, are you, like, everything okay, love? How is this going, love? Blah, 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 blah. Love, 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 love. Every time he said sentence to her, it ends with the word love. And just, just a side note, I hate pet names. They make me extremely uncomfortable. I'm, like, like, PDA grossed me out. Like, I'm, like, just very, like, queasy about that kind of thing. So reading this. Um, it was so much romance. Um, like not okay. The plot wasn't taken over by romance, but when the romance popped up, it was just so like in your face. It was just not my favorite thing. The political uh, political aspects and like the plot was very interesting. I really loved the plot of this book. I just thought the romance was like too much. Too much. Okay, I'm not going to lift this pile of books because it will fall over, but those were the 14 books that I read this month. I hope you enjoyed this semi-chaotic, I feel like I'm a little bit all over place, review, <laughs> reviews and stuff. Um, I'm so sorry, but uh, please check out the videos that are around me and live, give this video a like if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more and I will see you guys in a video soon. Bye!